How a woman went from homeless to a millionaire. Today's video is about the excruciating journey of 21-year-old Danny Johnson, who went from homeless to millionaire and defied some of the most dreadful circumstances. Before we get into the video, take a few seconds to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. As reported by Forbes, Danny Johnson made a meager living as a cocktail waitress in Hawaii and was living out of her car with just $2.03 to her name, plus a $35,000 debt burdening her life. And previous to this burden, she was haunted by a childhood filled with brutal and systematic physical and sexual abuse. Upon one occasion, she had even attempted suicide following a cocaine binge. However, her will to survive and a little bit of luck changed her life forever. Today, Danny Johnson is a multi-millionaire, runs several companies, and spends her time jetting around the world, giving back through her various charities, one of which is actually called Giving Back Charity. It's been said that how she went on to make her first million despite a tortured past and despite being homeless is the stuff of entrepreneurial legend. And once you hear this tale, you'll agree with us as well. It was Dr. Phil who said, quote, It doesn't matter what your mama did. It doesn't matter what your daddy didn't do. Nobody but you is responsible for your life. You are responsible for the energy that you create for yourself. End quote. And this quote is a steady theme throughout the details of Danny's life. In interviews, Danny recounted her life, starting off in 1990 on Christmas Eve. Quote, I was stoned out of my mind for two months, sleeping with eight different guys. I got to eat only by dating all these people. I realized that I'd become worse than the family I grew up in, and that was devastating. My mom and dad were drug addicts, and I'd never seen my parents sober. My childhood was filled with threats and getting beaten daily, week in and week out. My life was filled with horror and terror and lies, and I vowed that I would never be like my family. And there I was doing cocaine." End quote. She said that she actually hated cocaine with a passion, and recalled that when coke was introduced into the home by her parents when she was a teenager, the violence had intensified and the emotional instability was horrifying. That Christmas Eve, she joined other waitresses at the beach to engage in a drink and drug binge. Sounds like a wild party, and it was probably a little too wild because Danny said, quote, I was sweating and I was constantly dancing. I see the coke and I lean down and I did a line. I remember waking up at 10 the next morning on my beach mat and I was asking everyone for coke. I was walking around saying, where do I get more of that stuff? That day, I would have given my body. I would have become a prostitute for coke and that's how low I became. I hated everything about myself. I knew my future would never be good. I was suicidal from the age of six. My life was not worth living. There was no chance to turn it into anything better. I was disgusting. I hated how my parents raised us. My life was filled with broken promises and lies, and people stealing, and people beating me, and people hating me, and me hating myself even more." End quote. Drowsy by the after-effects of the drugs, in an almost catatonic state that morning, Danny said she decided she was going to end it all. Quote, I started walking towards the ocean and dived underneath the wave. End quote. A few more moments under and her life would have ended there, but something ignited a spark in her and her life changed forever. Almost a miracle. Danny said it felt almost like a miracle to her. Quote, I heard a voice say, pick up your mat and walk. The feeling of coke left instantly. I wasn't wanting it anymore. I rolled up my beach mat, turned around and hiked a mile that I needed to do in order to get back to my car. I drove 45 minutes to the beach where I was living, and the whole time I was driving, it was as if the left side of my mind was saying, this is not what's intended for your life. You shouldn't be drinking. There's more to life. And the right side was saying, you're a failure. You're a loser. You're filthy. Worse than your parents. Drive this car into the ocean. This was like a war inside my mind with these voices, and I was literally in a trance. And I have no idea why I chose to listen to that first voice. End quote. So Danny began to ask herself, what can I do? What do I need to do to get myself out of this situation? As a cocktail waitress, I wasn't making enough, so I had to figure out my options, she said. She needed $4,500 to be able to afford an apartment, but with a small income derived mostly from tips, coupled with the island's high rents, it would take her four months to save enough money, so time was crucial. Quote, I didn't want to be homeless for another four months. Rent in Hawaii was outrageously expensive and I couldn't afford plane tickets back to California. I knew no one. I was terrified I would be raped or beaten or kidnapped 
because there wasn't any shelter. I was a kid who, between the ages of 3 to 16, was abused and molested. The emotions were still there. You try to push this back, but when you're homeless, it's at the forefront of your mind all the time, and it was terrifying to me." End quote. That night she fell asleep in her car without any answers, but the following day, the proverbial light bulb went off and she explained it in her interviews. Quote, I get this idea, and there was this weight loss program I had purchased long before I was homeless, lying in the back seat. I had used it for a week, I never paid attention to it before, and it just caught the corner of my eye in the sun. It was warped from the humidity, but it was as if this device was talking to me. I picked it up and it was as if this thing was saying, I'm your answer. And my first thought was, no, I'm not going to peddle a weight loss program, no way I'm going to do this. I saw the manufacturer's detail and called them from the payphone. I started asking them the questions. What is it going to take to carry the product in Hawaii? As it turned out, it would require me to have licensing and money. That I didn't have." End quote. And this is when the innate resourcefulness that Danny never realized she had blossomed. Quote, I hand wrote a flyer for the weight loss program, but I needed a phone number to advertise so people could contact me and I didn't have one, so I picked up the yellow pages in the phone booth. You know, cocktail waitresses always have coins, so I looked through Yellow Pages and called a small telecommunications company, and I chatted with this guy for some time, trying to build a relationship. I asked him what the cost of their voicemail service was. He said to me, don't drive all the way to pay for this. Send me a check for $15. Here's your new number. At that time, Danny was elated down to her last quarters for that week, but it was the little that she needed. Quote, I put up the flyer at the post office where everyone in this town went to and three hours later, not knowing I would get any messages, it was filled with 25 messages. I didn't know what to do with them. Long story short, I ended up with 40 checks, totaling $4,000 from people I didn't even know, that first month. And it came to pass that Danny made a quarter of a million dollars that first year just by selling the weight loss program. Then by the second year of that venture, she was a millionaire. These funds provided the foundations for her to expand her ventures and open up 18 weight loss centers around the nation. Give us your thoughts about this touching and inspiring story in the comment section below. Then be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.